I was working with beautiful mother of pearl buttons, but I'm a color lover. I need to be able to create with color. I just buy these white packages of buttons and I would spray paint them with automotive spray paint. And uh, it's completely for fun, just absolutely fun. <laughs> I live in Palo Alto, California, and I love many of the things about Palo Alto, but I especially love the Baylands Preserve. I was taking a walk and the fog had descended. All the imagery looked like the inside of an abalone shell. And I thought, that's what I want to try to do. I created a piece called One Winter Walk and one winter walk led to an entire series of pieces. They were quilted, they were dyed, they were almost all kimonos. They're almost all about five feet wide by about six feet tall. A friend of mine said, Judith, you're making art quilts. And I said, what is an art quilt? She said, you're not tied into a pattern. You're allowed to do anything you want. It's what you're doing. I am descended from a family of artists and engineers. I just always assumed that maybe I would be an artist too. I hoped so. I decided to pursue art at San Francisco State University. There wasn't a class that I just didn't love. I took ceramics, jewelry, sculpture, painting, drawing, everything that they offered until I discovered textiles. The teacher took an enormous basket of ethnic textiles, and she just threw them over the surface of the table. I was mesmerized by all the different colors and the textures and the patterns. Then Annalisa Hedstrom came to our class and did a one-hour demonstration of a technique called Arashi Shibori. Annalisa brought in pipes that were about as tall as she was, and she did this magical pleating and wrapping and puckering and crinkling and dyeing. And when she unwrapped her pulls, the results were just magical. And I wanted to go home immediately and start dyeing. My earliest dye attempts were just tiny little pieces of fabric. Um, I think in some ways that may have led me right away to quilting, because what are you gonna do with a whole lot of small pieces of fabric but sew them together and make something bigger? Shibori is an umbrella term for all resist dye techniques involving resisting the dye with thread. Arashi Shibori was developed on, originally, poles about the size of a telephone pole, and the results looked like sheets of wind and rain and Arashi translates to mean storm in Japanese, so I think there might be some meaning behind it there. I first intricately pleat the silk into long leaf-like shapes. That will reduce the silk from a panel about five feet long by a foot wide to a little bundle of pleated silk. That reduced package of silk is wrapped around the pole and then secured with thread. I'll use varying dimensions of thickness for different effects. When it gets wet, the silk expands and it presses against the threads so that that dye cannot penetrate those areas. Once I create my palette of silks, I then create the composition. That is very like collage. You really are looking for exciting combinations. When I find a couple of those, they go up onto my design wall. Not until my eyes are really happy do I consider the composition stage complete. And then I can begin the quilting process. When I graduated with a degree in textiles, the wearable art movement was at its peak in San Francisco. I was immersed in this entire group of talented women doing amazing work. Then, when I was expecting my daughter, I stopped dying completely. That was the first time I'd really stopped to think since I had graduated from college. I wanted my work to be on the wall. I wanted it to actually be big, much bigger than what could be worn by the human being. And by the time she was born, 
I had decided I was going to focus on architectural pieces. The subject matter that drew me in was always nature. I will see some kind of formation, moss on a rock, craggy lichens, waves at the beach, and I will say to myself, that sure looks like shibori. How can I possibly get shibori to look like that? I will try, and sometimes I'll get there, sometimes I won't, but I'll get somewhere else. And sometimes what I come up with looks like the next thing I want to make a wall piece. I loved working big. I loved the excitement of the installation and watching these pieces go up. But eventually, I really wanted to come back to something more nuanced than what you could achieve when you're working on the scale of three stories. When I'm stitching, I'm essentially drawing with a sewing machine. The sewing lines are intended to define areas in the dyeing or to obscure patterns in the dyeing. What I wanted to achieve here was the essential image of brush strokes, lines, pencil strokes, just a stroke of charcoal. In these areas, the quilting lines are black and they are accentuating the patternation in the dyed silk. But here, I wanted to diffuse the background, make it just disappear from your vision. And so I very carefully matched thread color to the background. It's exciting to watch it emerge as you're quilting because you start to see the texture, the silk kind of has a beautiful pebbled surface the quilting can actually change the dyeing so very much. I have an exhibition at the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles titled Evanescence. The word evanescence means the fleeting nature of light, imagery, sound, time, almost anything. In the case of my work, evanescence often refers to the fleeting nature of the images in nature that I search out. The definition of the art quilt doesn't require two layers of cloth connected by thread. I was thinking of an art quilt being two layers of sound connected by a hillside. It could be anything that's two layers connected by something else. When you think of it in terms of that, I would be really excited to see where the art quilt goes. Mm -hmm.